If you're just joining us, we bought this cool little craftsman style home with intentions of doing a quick fix and flip. We thought it was a typical wood frame turn of the century home until we tore into the demo work and discovered it was actually an old pioneer dovetail log cabin. The logs have been covered from day one and they're in excellent shape. So our quick fix and flip has turned into a quest to renovate and restore this awesome old log cabin. Hi everyone and welcome back. If you caught the last video, I reframed the window in the upper gable and sheeted over it. I didn't cut it out because I thought it might be too big. I asked you viewers what you thought about it and received a ton of feedback. After mulling it over, I've come to a decision, but I'm not going to cut it out just yet. I'll get back to it later in the video. There's one more section on the east side of the house that needs to be sheeted, but I think I'll wait and do that while I'm framing the addition. And speaking of the addition, that's what I really need to focus on next. My plan is to get the floor poured and get it framed up, but before I can do that, I need to get the dirt work done and the plumbing installed for the two bathrooms. This is where the sewer line goes into the existing house. It has this custom Folgers coffee can lid because the top of the clean out has a hole in it. The first thing I need to do is expose the pipe and make sure I have grade to come up the back of the house and tie into the addition right here. So without further ado, let's get digging. The ground's wet from all the rain and snow we've had lately and it sure made for some easy digging. And as you can see, the sewer pipe is pretty shallow. When I check it for grade with the level, the slope is one inch per foot. As per local building code, we only need a quarter inch per foot or two percent. So my plan is to come off the back of the addition right here and work my way back to the sewer line at a two percent grade. Since the current slope is more than that, I'll have to chase it a ways further into the yard to connect. I should have installed a piece of pipe or something for a sleeve in this foundation wall before it was poured, but I didn't. I guess I like to do things the hard way sometimes.
So that's where I need to punch a hole in the wall and it's all ready to go. But it's starting to rain and I've got a little project to do inside. So I'm going to be a wuss and move in there for a while. So this is what's left of the old plumbing and I'm going to replace it with new ABS pipe for the drainage and pecs for the water lines. Nice. That would have been so much easier to put a sleeve in there. To get the foundation ready for the backfill and grading, next I broke off all the snap ties that were used to hold the forms together while pouring concrete. Then I removed these tubifores that were placed on the inside form flush with the top to create a knockout for the floor slab to be poured into later. The top of the slab will be flush with the top of the foundation and the bottom will rest right here on this ledge of which will also give me a grade for my gravel that I'm planning on filling up all of this area inside with. Next, I used a square nose shovel to move all the dirt and debris back away from the inside of the foundation wall to make a nice flat spot for the insulation board to set on.
I'm using this Owens Corning product. It's two inches thick and it's rated an R10 value, which is what local building code requires. The reason for this is to prevent cold and frost from getting into and under the floor slab by transferring through the foundation wall. Basically, I just placed it against the wall, used a stab saw to cut it off flush with the ledge where the floor slab is going to set, and used a few rocks to hold it in place until I bring the gravel in later. And after finishing off the insulation board, my son and I cleared off the little bit of grass that was left right here and used a bunch of the smaller rocks to partially fill the void on the inside of the foundation wall. Next up, I need to use my well used but new to me dump trailer to pick up some gravel to fill in and grade for the underground plumbing and floor. But before we get into that, we have a window issue to address. I've decided to narrow the width to three foot and keep the height four foot. That matches the style of the rest of the existing windows. To meet egress since it's a bedroom, I'm going with a casement style window that creaks open in case of fire or some other emergency. 